Hello everyone, this is Jay with another episode of the Digital Age Show. Today we have with us Justin from Conversion Fanatics, which is one of the top conversion rate optimization agencies out there, which has helped over 150 companies to improve their marketing effectiveness. So, hey Justin, how are you today? And please would you introduce yourself for our audience? Yeah, Jay, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm Justin Christensen. Um been a long time digital marketer. Uh, I think this is year 22 for me. Um, so I had my own direct to consumer comp, you know, products. Um, did I've done pretty much everything in marketing up to this point. Um, right. Sold my information publishing company back to my business partners about 12 or 13 years ago. Started a private consultancy, which then transformed into me partnering with a longtime friend, uh, Manish Punjabi is his name. Um, to start what's what morphed into conversion fanatics and you know been very fortunate to be able to evolve our strategy and our execution and our company you know to grow it from just him and I to you know being part of a much larger you know organization and team now so yeah we've helped hundreds of companies um, I think 150 is actually light <laughs> we yeah. probably it's, it's up into the few hundred at this point yeah. um, and, you know, some of the biggest and best brands in the world. And we're very fortunate to be able to help, you know, some amazing companies sell some amazing products and services. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of my journey. That's, that's a hell of a journey, dude. Like, you have been there <laughs> for 22 years. You must have seen the transformation of... Have you been doing marketing since, like, when you started? So, I hadn't... I have been a full-time marketer for since 2005. Okay. So I was part, I was part-time since about 2001. So yeah, 21, 22 years, I think is something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen it all. There was, you know, video used to be just terribly hard to do. Um, AdWords really didn't even exist. And then um, Facebook definitely didn't. Um, you know, we could rank for keywords in like two or three days, right, you know, yeah. it was penny, penny clicks on AdWords when it first came out. I mean, we were split testing before split testing was even a thing. Um, you, you know, it, it's been a fun journey to see, see it all kind of evolve and the technology and, you know, the, uh, you know, the onset of like things like YouTube and, you know, as Facebook rolled out and the advertising programs and Twitter and, you know, all of these new things you know, that, that evolved into what we see as a very social kind of environment. I mean, e-commerce wasn't even a thing, you know, Amazon right. was yeah. barely a thing, you yeah. know, so it, it was really fun to see. And it was kind of the wild west, <laughs> really. It was just kind of no, no rules <laughs> in a lot of True. ways. I wish, yeah. I wish we had some of that now, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, technology has kind of leveled the playing field. Um, right in in how it goes but yeah it's been it's been a fun journey to to see it all and you know i still see a lot you know we get to have our hands in a lot of different businesses and we get to see a whole lot of data and um it, it's cool it's 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 fun and, and rewarding at the same time so so basically you have gone from the email marketing space to then the earlier social media stages to the variety of platforms of like mm -hmm. number of social medias people started using to now wherein like uh, terms like CRO are being used which were not even a thing back then basically yeah. if you have a good product if you have a good website people would rather buy it but now there are so many factors involved in the e-commerce as well as the SaaS space like there are agencies doing out specific things for them mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's kind of what we were too I mean I understand marketing in general, I've done all of it. I've bootstrapped my own companies to, um, uh, you know, bootstrap my own companies to to create something from nothing. You know, I've managed a million email sends a day in the previous life, split testing all of those things. Um, right. But yeah, we narrowed our focus down to conversion rate optimization because we realized that so many people were talking about the latest ad hack or you know how to get traffic to your website how to you know drive quality traffic but nobody was talking about the other piece and that's getting 
getting results from that traffic. You know, you can optimize an ad campaign all day, every day, but unless you have, you know, the post click kind of scenario figured out, you're leaving so much money on the table. And my Manish and I both grew our previous companies, our, our respective separate companies that we both sold um, to through optimization. It's just right. testing and yeah. tweaking and, and adapting and evolving and just constantly moving the pieces around. And that we did that through split testing. You know, we didn't really truly know conversion rate optimization like we do now you know, back then, even when we started it, but so many people just did not know how to execute a split test. So we just decided, well, what if we do that for them? <laughs> and we, okay. you know, we've tried to dabble in a bunch of different pieces of the, the, the e-com and the SaaS and the marketing game, but it's always just come back to our core and that's that we're an optimization company. Yeah. So that's the, like, that's how you started uh, right, that's how you started. So, do you think there's a uh, there's an educating factor involved? Like, you have to educate the audience about, uh, I mean, your clients about what is CRO and how important it is to them and why they should hire an agency and not try and do it themselves. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a lot harder, and we had to educate a lot more. I mean, I there's only so many ways you can say the same thing <laughs> as it pertains to optimization. Right. So, I mean, I preached the same thing. I've done the same message, the same videos, the same things with different spins or angles or approaches to it for a decade, you know? So we, we have to educate them on the importance of it. Not so much the importance of it anymore because people are realizing that they need it. And a lot more people are talking about it. And luckily we had kind of a, a eight plus year head start on a lot of these right. companies. Yeah. But um, at the same time, we have to educate them on the proper way to do it. Because so many times people just think they need to growth hack their way to it, or they just need these big, massive, wild changes, mm -hmm. or they just need to redesign the landing page, or they need a new landing page, yeah. or they need a new homepage, or they need to do something. And the fact is, if you take that kind of spray and pray, sporadic, rapid fire approach, you're going to end up frustrated and you're not going to get the long lasting results that you are looking to get. So instead, we take more of an incremental approach to hiding or changing or rearranging elements on a page to figure out that the visitors actually care about it. Uh, you know, how do they interact with that page? How do they, you know, how does that impact secondary metrics? Not just that it created a new lead or it created a new sale and really creating an ultimate experience for the visitors. Cause I, I get so many, the, the biggest question I get is like, people are underwhelmed by the first tests that we, we run because they are so thinking that we need this bigger change to get this bigger impact and this bigger result. And that's the opposite of what we typically will see. Um, it's that persistent, consistent experimentation that really leads to the big exponential kind of long-term scale and growth. Because I can, I can boost your conversion rate. You're just not going to like me in three to six months when your offer's burned out and I've used yeah. a trick or a gimmick or a, a hack to get you mm -hmm. there and and you just end up frustrated um so yeah it's uh it, definitely an education process not as much anymore uh, but you know we still have to talk about the the process and the methodology and kind of how we approach optimization as a whole great so how is the process of getting a business on board like uh the e-commerce companies or the SaaS companies uh, who you mm -hmm. might be dealing with like Knowing it, like, are they the right fit for CRO? Like, uh, is there a discovery call involved wherein you check some parameters? Yeah, so I mean, it really comes down to volume. So obviously, you know, like I had a conversation with a SaaS company yesterday, I think a uh, very niche specific um, product out of Canada. And they only okay. got like 500 visits a month. Very high, high tier but you can't optimize 500 visitors a month, not in the traditional optimization sense. So we generally say if you have, you know, 20 to 30 
transactions, either leads or sales per day. Um, and it, depending on your average order value, we should be able to help. Um, but I'm usually the first to say, you know, we can't help, you okay. know, but I really want to try to provide as much value. Like that company yesterday, I gave them the steps to take and some insights that will help them get to where they need to be, but they probably will never be able to do true conversion optimization because their their pool is only literally their the target market is yeah. only 20 twenty thousand people so okay. it's like it's only twenty thousand in their entire company organization or you know in their target market so it's going to be very very hard <laughs> to optimize that from a traditional split test sense so yeah 20 30 sales i mean if you get 5 10 15 sales a day and your your product's three grand you know, versus if you're selling a $30 pair of socks or something, it's going to be right. a lot different, you know, in how we approach optimization. But, you know, if the volume's there, usually we'll do an analysis and we'll kind of get an understanding of what the heck's going on uh -huh. um, and make sure we can help. Because if, if we can't, I'll be the first to tell you, but at least I'll give you some sense of which, which direction to go. All right. So, uh, like, in your opinion, what's the difference between working with bigger businesses and smaller ones? Like, what is the major difference apart from the money involved, if that's not a mm -hmm. constraint? Like, what are the major differences? Is there uh, some ease in doing businesses with bigger people, bigger stores? Um, they all have their challenges. So... A smaller company is usually like an owner founder. They're usually going to have maybe a, a, a e-commerce manager. Or they're going to have some kind of marketing manager and just a handful of employees. Um, they are less, they have a lot more urgency okay. or they are false sense of urgency. Typically they want things faster and better and bigger and more always. Whereas the larger companies generally have their checks and balances in place. They have their message market match. They're at a point of scale. They're just looking to refine it and, and adjust it. So that's talking like companies that are doing maybe 50 to 250 million, um, maybe I guess 10 million probably up. They, they kind of have it figured out more so 15 million and up. Then you get into the big corporate organizations like, right. you know, Fortune 500, et cetera, where those companies move extremely slow. They have a lot of stakeholders in it. They are slow to make decisions, but it's very methodical and thought out. I like working with kind of the middle of the road where that 20 to 50 to maybe 100 million the most um, just because they understand the importance of long term, they understand that they don't need 50% month over month growth to, okay. to sustain it. You know, they're happy with 10, 15, 20% yearly growth, like normal businesses. Um, but the smaller companies get this in their head that they need these two, 300% growth spurts to, to meet to be successful. So that level of urgency is a little bit hard to navigate. Um, but they're still they're still great, and we can still help them, and we can still do things. We just have to slow it down and and be a little, right. <laughs> you know, realistic. a little more, yeah. Uh, yeah, realistic in the expectations. But you know, we've we've done amazing things and scaled companies, you know, help them scale, you know, two three hundred percent a year. Um, our record to date is eighteen hundred and fifty percent growth in ten months, but. That's, that's like that's a that's, unicorn you know you yeah, can't that's super you, you can't do that every week for everyone yeah yeah so that <laughs> as much as i have, would love to do it all the time it's hard. yeah you 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 would rather like to mention it after every discovery call that we have done this but we can't do pull it off for yeah. each and everyone out there yeah i don't even use it as a case study anymore um it was so many factors involved in that to, to make it go um, but you know we we do have an impact on businesses, if they look at it from a scalability and growth factor versus, you know, what did you do for me this month, you know, type thing, and they look at optimization as a process, that is probably my biggest issue with how people see optimization is they think it's going to be this quick fix. It's going to be one and done. It's going to be, you know, we're going to have all of our problems solved in the next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. And that's not the case. I mean, 
SEO doesn't happen overnight. Dialing in a PPC campaign doesn't happen overnight. You know, you can't expect miracles in, in, in a short amount of time. You know, we do our best and we, we show up and we swing and we try. And that's the big thing. But there's a process to it. You know, it just takes time. And that's what a lot of people need to realize and understand is, you know, you see all the success stories online. You see all everybody showing their highlight reels on social media. And that's just not reality. You know, everybody's got struggles. Everybody's got problems. And, you know, we're faced with, you know, even right now at the time of recording this, you know, we're, we're coming into an election cycle here in the United States. Yeah. And yes. we have um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And we have, you know, people are holding their breath because of inflation and economics and all of these things are playing a factor which is impacting marketing and it's impacting market performance and we have to uh, i've had a dozen conversations this week alone just with clients and non-clients to you know discuss that and you have to evolve and you have to adapt and you have to lean into those things as marketers mm -hmm. because you know that's that's what changes but you know the dynamics constantly change in the market too yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Totally makes sense. So consider that I have, like, I aspire to start a CRO agency like yours. I am looking at Conversion Fanatics and their awesome growth, and I wish to start an agency. So what would be your advice for someone like me who is just starting out, who doesn't have his first client, doesn't have all those testimonials, uh -huh. doesn't have those results? So what would be the go-to strategy to begin from zero? If you have to start Conversion Fanatics from zero right now, what would be your go-to strategy? Um, I mean, all I know is how we did it. You know, that's, we started with nothing. Like literally we started right. with, we each threw $750 into a bank account. So we started with 1500 bucks and an idea. And we listened to the market. We knocked on a lot of virtual doors, meaning we did everything in our power to, you know, provide value to the marketplace is probably the biggest thing that I did. Um, all of these people touting that they're going to get you all of these accounts and all of these bookings and these appointments. And I mean, just log into LinkedIn and see, you've got an inbox full of people saying they can get you appointments booked. Yeah. And we've tried every one of them. You know, we've tried the booking companies. We've tried the webinars. We've tried the funnels. We've tried the direct mail pieces. We've done, we've literally tried everything. And the thing that I would tell people the most is be consistent in your message. Be persistent in your outreach and uh, doing what you do best. And that is, split test your and try new things and adapt and evolve and read your data because we started out literally with a webinar and trying to teach it nobody wanted to learn it so then everybody's like well can you guys just do this for me um and that evolved into into conversion fanatics so then we started just knocking on virtual doors we did cold outreach we did um some paid traffic it didn't work early on Okay. Um, the traditional lead generation stuff that yeah. we see as a direct to consumer business, you know, just doesn't work in the B2B space as much, or it, it didn't, it does now because we have enough street cred to, to, to carry it over. But um, we did when then we moved into sponsoring events and trade shows. And I've been on, I think one year I did, I wrote like 120 something blog articles. I published Ooh. every case study that we had. I wrote that all year. Like I, I literally every day I would write like five articles. I just kept going and going and going. Um, I published and wrote a book, you know, on, on the topic. I, I've been on literally not so much anymore, which is kind of weird, even though we're talking on this on a podcast, <laughs> but I've been on yeah. hundreds of podcasts. I've spoken on stages. I've sponsored events to get on stage. I've done, you know, I, we even pulled stupid stunts where we, we mailed hundred dollar bills, like hundred dollar bills to CEOs of, or CMOs of big SaaS companies. Um, 
it resulted in a complete failure. Um, and it was at the time we didn't have an extra thousand bucks to spend. And we sent it to like our dream 10 list that we wanted to work with. And, it, you know, this big follow-up in place and all of this stuff. And it failed miserably, you know, and, and we learned from it and we adapted it and we evolved that process and, and, and got better. And that's really all I say. And all I, all we did is we were just very persistent in our, our message and we just tried everything until we found something that works and then we doubled down on it. Um, you know, now we're pretty much inbound. We're pretty much, you know, all of our ads are working and we sponsor a lot of podcasts and we are not a lot, just a handful um, just because that's what works for us now. And, you know, we, we try to, you know, probably still provide them enough value into the marketplace. But when you're starting, as much as people say it's easy and it's this great business model, an agency is hard. It mm -hmm. is a lot of work. It's a lot of emotional ups and downs. It's a lot of adjustments that, you know, takes a lot of effort and you got to have thick skin to do it because you're dealing with a lot of personalities. You're dealing with a lot of moving parts. And, you know, I can think of a lot of simpler business models for sure, but, um, it's super rewarding to be able to, you know, see your work out in a large scale. You know, I can log into, you know, see some very massive companies and some brands mm -hmm. and even companies we worked with, you know, five, six years ago. And our some of our stuff is still in place now after all these years on their website. And, you know, to know that we've had a part in that and we've helped, you know, literally millions, tens of millions of people. Actually, it's been probably billions of people at this point, um, hundreds of millions mm -hmm. um, of people, yeah. you know, get amazing products and, and services, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's cool. And I always tell our team every single day that or every week for sure that we have it's a bigger impact than us. It's not about us. It's not about even, you know, our, our clients. It's about all of their customers and being able to deliver all of those amazing products. So I think it really just comes down to giving a giving a damn about your products and given a damn about providing service because you know the agency world is kind of broken i think in a lot of ways is because there's so many people that don't know what they're doing oh yeah that sell yeah. that sell something and then right. those that do actually care and know what they're doing it makes it harder for those that actually, you know, it makes it harder for the good I guys to, work, to yeah. get out there. Yeah. yeah. Because there's so many people so burned out and jaded to the whole entire agency process that, mm -hmm. you know, and I see messages on social media all the time. It's like, Oh, Hey, I just closed this $10,000 retainer. <laughs> now what, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I just, I, it makes me sick to, to see that when we're trying to provide, you know, a great product or service to, you know, some amazing companies that makes it hard. Great. So now we know that Black Friday is around and do you guys at Conversion Fanatics have any special techniques that you utilize for your like clients? Definitely not the details, but some minor hacks that might help some small players to reduce their spends in this season. What's that? Repeat that. Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Yeah. So now we know that Black Friday is around, right? So do you yep. have any special techniques for your clients? As in, definitely not the details, but some minor hacks that might help the small business people to reduce the ad spends or optimize their sites? Yep. So this time of year is always interesting. Because usually I'm not one to race to the discount or race to the promotion and use that as a marketing technique or tactic most of the time during the year. Because when everything's on sale always, it kind of reduces the credibility in the market. But this time of year, the gloves are off. Like you can do absolutely anything and everything you want to do to discount, to do promotions, to do... Um, buy one, get one freeze and all of these, you know, whatever tactics and tricks to, to drive sales, because uh, frankly, you know, this drives a good majority of the revenue for a lot of companies, you know, this next two months. Yeah. Um, so I generally look at kind of a tiered promotion and some of the, the tricks that I generally will use um, is, you know, 
get this and get a free gift. And we use a lot of gift with purchase stuff and a lot of our clients do too. So do it in a tiered environment. So if you buy a certain level or dollar amount, you get this gift, you know, or you buy this certain dollar amount, you get this. Um, but other than that, the biggest thing and more so what we learned really when the pandemic hit and when COVID came about is people just wanted to know what the expectation was. Like they wanted to know what the outcome was when they purchased and they just wanted that set. Mm -hmm. And I think Amazon has done it and kind of ruined it for a lot of people mm -hmm. just because, you know, they obviously nobody's going to compete with, you know, two or three hour shipping or two day shipping or next day right. shipping on literally everything. Um, you know, it's very difficult for the small business to do that. So what we find is just set the expectation for the visitors. Do you have the product in stock? When, how many do you have in stock? When will it be shipped? When should I expect this? Even if it's a window. And I think more so this year, I mean, we're having a lot of fulfillment companies say that their shipping cutoff times are December 3rd this year. That's really, really early yeah. for Christmas shopping and Black Friday. So that limits your window by over two weeks. So, you know, before the pandemic, shipping cutoff times were like December 20th, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to get your product. Yeah, now it's... Yeah. Now it's 15, then it was the 15th and then it was the 10th. And now it's like, literally I, I had a client tell me, yeah, we're talking like we have the third, like December 3rd is our cutoff time. It's like, how do you, how do you manage that? So setting the expectation this time of year is probably the biggest hack and really any time, but people just want to know that they're going to get the product. And then what we're hearing and seeing a lot of is people planning to really run their promotion through the end of the year. Um, just because if people don't get it by Christmas, but you also have to set that expectation too. It's like, Hey, it's the 15th of December. You're not going to get this product by Christmas, but we're still going to pass the savings to you. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, happy new year, you know, type, type situation there. So, yeah, yeah. um, that's some of the things that we kind of look for and do. Um, and it really kind of just drives it out there. Yeah. Makes sense. So now we are almost at the end of the podcast so i would like to ask you this question because i have seen you over the period like i've seen your post i've seen your journey i have like i have not gone through it i've not been mm -hmm. there but i've gone through the whole journey i've listened to a lot of podcasts of yours so what is yep. the future of conversa fanatics ahead from here you surely must be having some goals set up well i mean coincidentally I, I achieved one of my biggest goals about two months ago. So conversion fanatics isn't necessarily what conversion fanatics used to be. Okay. So um, the beginning of this year, um, we set out to find a partner, a bigger partner that, that can help us kind of expand our resources and, and mm -hmm. um, our, our capabilities. And two months ago, we closed that deal. So we're actually part of a very, uh, a much larger organization now a brand called fusion 92. So we actually merged two months ago with that company and mm -hmm. their partners and their, all of their solutions and tools to provide a bunch of amazing, you know, media and tech and, and additional solutions that we can use and leverage for our optimization clients. So my goal and really has been for the last couple of months is to really integrate there, um, get to work with some of their amazing legacy clients and, and really expand our, um, really expand on our tool set and really just provide better and more and, and bigger value to, to our existing clients and even in the marketplace. But we're still operating as conversion fanatics. We're still doing there. And now I'm technically an executive at the, at the larger organization, um, heading up the, the optimization program. So that's kind of been a goal of mine is just to have a bigger piece in the optimization world, even more so than what we've had for the last, you know, almost nine years. Yeah, so my congratulations on that. That's a great, great, like you, if you had it on your list, that's a definitely a great achievement. So it was a big, we, it was a big one for sure. Yeah, yeah, I can feel that because like you sharing it now, the journey will be slightly different. You have to, you guys have to integrate the two companies, their operating systems. Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's kind of the side of it, but more so we're excited to, 
because our system, a lot of our systems and our processes are staying the same in that regard. It's just, I get to be part of something bigger, something that we, it would have taken a long time to do just as conversion fanatics and and I kind of, kind of heading it up. So it allows us, you know, more resources and tools and, and capabilities there. Yeah. Great. So I wish you all the best for your future interviews. That was a really Thanks. great interview. It was a pleasure having you on my show. And I'm definitely looking forward, like we schedule this some other time and we get to continue this conversation on more about, more in detail about CRO whenever you have yeah. time. Thank you yeah, so much no for joining problem. me Thanks. on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. The pleasure is mine. Um, 